So this is supposed to be like a speed run talk. So I should have really drank a coffee before I came up here, but here we go. Again, Chris Fried, software engineer at Meta. I've been like doing Zephyr for a long time. And actually this is like the fifth year that we've had the IG micro conference. So like, woo, yeah, you know, um, uh, it's been really great. Like we've had a lot of the same people year after year, which is amazing to me because that means we're driving interest. Uh, and like I love radio, so just to get into this stuff is, you know, it's, it's for me, it's worth it every time. Um, so I, today I was going to talk about uh, Zephyr uh, in the context of the last five years that we've been doing the IoT microconference. Uh, because when I started with it, it was Vboard, and we did this great project with like Graybus and, you know, Graybus for Zephyr and stuff like that. Um, and we're finally shipping those units, which is incredible. And Nizant's over there, helped out. Vaishnav, awesome work. Uh, Gerva, I think, probably helped out too. With the uh, Beagle play and stuff like that? Very good. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Uh, but yeah, here's our agenda. Basically gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna speed run through the last five years of Zephyr highlights. Um, we're gonna discuss growth of the project. And then I'll just give a couple of my bits of advice, having gone through the LTS2 to nearly LTS3 transition at Meta. Um, that was a lot of work, uh, but, but we did it very methodically. So uh, hopefully I can impart a little bit of my experiences to others who are going to do the same. First of all, yeah, there's swag. Um, so I'm going to ask like five questions over the next 10 minutes. Uh, and if I'm slowing down, just you know, yell at me and I'll speed up. But these are some of the boards that I brought. Uh, so I've got these little footballs, projectiles, whatever you want to call them. They're like Nerf, so they're soft, you know. Uh, they're a little bit slippery, so if I, you know, you know, fumble or something like that, please don't, uh, you know, don't come after me. But we've got the RP, RP2040 from uh, Seeds. Uh, I think I've got two of those. Uh, the box is right here, if, it's, uh, if a visual helps. This is a Bluetooth Wi-Fi chipset from um, WIO, and then it's paired with a Raspberry Pi Pico. So it's kind of a cool platform. Uh, if it's not already upstream of Zephyr, you should upstream it. <laughs> and I'll review it. Um, so yeah. The um, next one is the FOMU, which is an FPGA uh, in the form factor of a thumb drive, like a little, what do they call them, the UB keys? Yeah. So if you have like the UB key, this it's an FPGA and it's like everything you need and it's open source tool, tool chain, synthesis tool chain. Um, so I've got one of those in a football. Uh, the next one is the Komu, which is slightly different. It's also got programmable logic in it, also supported with the open synthesis tools. Uh, it also has a Cortex M that's a hardcore. So that's kind of interesting. Um, got some stickers for you. Uh, I, I want to point out this one. Uh, I'm going to pour one out for uh, Wolfgang, uh, this is the U-Boot sticker. Uh, and of course, uh, Wolfgang Denks passed away not too long ago, so just got to remember our fallen uh, friends. Uh, this one is, it's been 10 years since I did my talk on um, embedded Gen 2 with the Bionic C library at Embedded Linux. And so I've thrown a couple of these uh, strange cow looking things with the Android body on it. Uh, that's Larry the cow uh, from Gen 2. So a couple of those stickers, Zephyr project stickers. We got the gray bus for Zephyr logo, which is the awesome Volkswagen hippie van, painted gray with the Z on the front. And it's got Zephyr on the license plate. Uh, yeah, so we've got a bunch of those. Uh, there's another Raspberry Pi Pico and an ESP32 Vroom. And of course, we, where would we be without, uh, with, with, without device tree? <laughs> so a couple of those as well. Anyways, I'm slowing down. Let me go faster. Highlights. I'm just going to read this off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm reading the slides. So oh, I missed a question. Pretend you didn't see that slide. Who remembers what version of Zephyr was released before we did the very first IoT microconference? Somebody said it. say it. You don't need the box. Just say it. Anybody? Anybody? Nope. Right now we're on 3.5. This was five years ago or something like that, four years ago. Uh, I'll give you another hint. It's lower than 3.5, <laughs> and it's on the next slide. <laughs> okay, who's going to say it? 
Anybody? Anybody? Perfect. Ready? Nice catch. All right. Okay, so let me speed run through this. 64-bit Arch support. That's um, including RISC-V. Um, then we added Cortex-R, point-to-point uh, -point protocol, 6-low CAN, which sounds kind of cool, but it's over the CAN bus. Uh, kind of a spoof on the 6-low pen. Added ARM v6M architecture, new TCP stack, TCP2, BLE stack support for the Vega board, which is awesome, dual core RISC-V, dual core uh, Cortex-M. Uh, we added ARM v8A. Uh, we added CAN open protocol, LoRa, GPIO API, rewrite entirely. The hierarchical, hierarchical device tree API that everybody loves when they get the error messages from. So like, amazing. I know that we all have that. Um, really great uh, re rewrite of the, the system heap and allocator. Uh, uh, Trusted firmware M by, uh, by our friends upstream. Uh, BLE is always improving. Advertising has, has gone great. Uh, we had the CMSS DSP library. Uh, we added virtual memory in Zephyr. Um, isochronous stuff in Bluetooth. Um, and now then we set the TCP2 stack to be the default. I remember submitting a bug right after that was switched and it was fixed almost immediately. Great community upstream of Zephyr. Uh, we added LLVM, LLVM toolchain support. We, we said, why are we reinventing our own integer tapes? Let's just use C99 tapes. Great, great decision. Standards, you know? Um, we added the Spark architecture. I know people that worked on that core <laughs> uh, from you know Sun Microsystems many years ago. Uh, uh, transport layer security. Oh, sorry, no, this is thread level storage. My mistake. Um, per thread runtime statistics, very very important. We added condition variables. How can you have mutexes without condition variables? You know, but that's something that came later, right? Um, so uh, and then x86 on demand paging. 64-bit arc v3, and of course you got the like, lightning bolt emoji right beside the arc, right? My dad was an electricity pastor this year. Pour one out for dad too. Um, so we added ARM v8.1 M, Cortex M55. There was an overhaul of tracing. Introduced power management. How can you not have power management in an IoT device? So we introduced that all between 2.0 and 3.5. Um, continued. More BLA stuff. Arm Clang. I don't. I've never used it, but it's apparently useful to people, uh, and it's really it's a good compiler for their for their jobs. So, um, and then MWDT. I'm not. I've never used that one either, but you know somebody does. Um, so we're supporting all these uh, uh, proprietary tool chains along with the open source tool chains, which is just like amazing. It's amazing that we can do that. Uh, upstream is effort. Uh, M profile vector extensions for all your Cortex devices. Um, Improved thread safety with new lib for C++ applications. That was my buddy Stefanos. I submitted a bug to him and he fixed it. He's awesome. Um, uh, address filtering, we were just talking about that. How is a coordinator in IEEE 80254? You need to filter this in hardware because you can't spare the cycles in software. Um, USB device by Johan, if I'm not mistaken. Um, RISC-V tightly coupled memory, very important. <laughs> I know that uh, there's a lot of people at my company that really value that addition. Um, and then, of course, we had uh, PCI Express, MSIX. Uh, I added uh, um, multicast DNS discovery, and then people fixed it because I messed it up. So thank you, Peter uh, P. Gent um, fixed it for me. Um, threat awareness for open OCD, incredible for debugging. And then we added the Zephyr prefix to all of our headers, which is good, but no, it was painful and, you know, whatever, we're dealing with it. Um, it's kind of painful for me because, you know, I have POSIX and, like, nobody wants the Zephyr slash uni standard .h. Everybody just wants to include the standard path. So we had to kind of undo that and have a special case just for POSIX just so we could be compliant. Um, there's been loads of networking improvements. Uh, SysBuild, where you can build multiple firmware edges in concert and stitch them together. Secure signing. Uh, Pico libc, we've got Keith right here. My new favorite li uh, C library. Can't wait to hack it and borrow your headers for POSIX. Um, uh, we had a Google Summer of Code student add the Apache Thrift module, which is awesome. Uh, we had a, another Google Summer of Code student almost get HTTP server right through the door, right through the finish line. And it's getting there too because we've got such a great community. Uh, Yuka Rasmussen has kind of taking it on and he's hacking with it, uh, with me in, in our, our spare time to get that past the finish line. We had Google delivering USB-C power delivery. Uh, 
DSP subsystem is now generic for all architectures. It's awesome. Um, we've got an architecture agnostic barrier API so that we can have cache coherent transactions. Also, Baylib. Um, a lot of Bluetooth stuff. Uh, Bjarki added real time clock API, which was good. I found a bug. It was a Y2K bug. He fixed it, or I fixed it, and he merged it. Uh, so I've, I found the I found a Y2K bug this year, believe it or not, and like I, I felt like I can retire now. So um, I should ask another question: Has anybody in this room ever has anybody in this room ever ported a board or fixed a bug in Zephyr? Anybody? Anybody? Keith, you don't count because I know you fix bugs all the time. Anybody else? Maybe you can count. If you want. Perfect. Here we go. Oh, sorry, it's slippery. Slippery. I hope you got the good one. <laughs> uh, lots of POSIX improvements. We had dynamic thread stacks, so now we're actually compliant with the POSIX spec. And we can spawn threads and get the stack from the heap, which is really dangerous in, in a real-time system, but like it's it's compliant. But we also did it in a way so that if we're doing something safety critical, we can just use a thread pool. So, so it's 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 uh, the user doesn't see that. It's completely opaque and it just works because it's the POSIX API. There's a lot of improvements left in the POSIX API. 2,787 bugs fixed since 2.0.0. Mic drop. Um, so yeah, Druva, you fixed a bug. Anyone else fixed a bug? Anyone in Zephyr? I know that you have, Nico. I'm not going to throw it at you. Here, Josh, I'll throw it at you. <laughs> um, yeah, so now we're just going to talk about the boring stuff. This is where it gets really boring. My talk is boring now. So, uh, I mean, it's been a lot of work, but, uh, you know, since version 2.0, it's actually kind of off the edge of the graph there. Uh, we've went from 200 boards supported to now like 626 as of this morning. Um, architectures, we started off with, uh, I believe it's like seven or eight or six even, uh, probably seven. Uh, that, those are just base architectures. Now we have 12 or 13, if I'm not mistaken, 13 base architectures. If you take sub-architectures into account, such as like all the ARM Cortex-Ms, all the Cortex-Rs, all those, we're now supporting 22 different architectures inside of Zephyr. We're not yet where Linux is, where they're like, we don't need this architecture anymore, or this one, or this one. But, you know, that, that's, a, that's a good place for Linux to be, you know, we're glad to take on new architectures, so. Um, and then, of course, uh, these are kind of interesting statistics uh, broken down on per release basis. So, obviously, as the Zephyr project gains momentum, we're starting to get more commits per release. That means we've got more awesome stuff. We're fixing more bugs. We're delivering more features. Um, and then, of course, we've got new contributors with each release. So that means that companies are getting on board and they're submitting things upstream for features and bug fixes, which is awesome. I should mention, this does not even cover any of the HALs or the modules. It's just the Zephyr repo itself. Oh, little figure down there too. Between version 2.0.0 and 3.5.0, there are 5,200, sorry, 52,635 commits. So that's quite a bit. I'm gonna say those for the most part were probably like Gerard, but you know, we'll see. Um, for reference, does anybody, anybody, here's, this is going to be a stretch. Has anybody used Zephyr one point whatever? I, I know you probably have, Nico. No? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Okay, so I'll save this one. But um, for reference, you know, like back then we had 500 contributors. Uh, at 2.7, which is the LTS release, we had over 1,000. Our boards more than doubled between the 1.0 uh, LTS and the 2.7 uh, LTS. Um, commit velocity, Kate. I know that you know that number. I'm actually going to write a script so that we have a sliding window and we can, yeah. So in the lulls, it's two commits an hour, but we got up to about 2.5, sometimes more than that. Um, you kind of have to like, you have to like pick and choose where the peaks are or you just, I was I was trying to do this in Bash like an hour ago, so I, I couldn't get the math done in Bash, unfortunately. Um, and now onto the boring part. Uh, if you're like us and you're going from LTS and you know 
maybe the next LTS was a little bit too far off. Um, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, maybe you just want to upgrade to the latest and greatest because there's a lot of really wicked features. But um, some of the things that we found helped uh, because we want to do always continuous integration, continuous tests, uh, is to use these uh, macros everywhere. You know, nobody likes to look at them, but it is an it is in a formal language, and if you um, like, if you try to do this just using like random scripts and stuff, there would be no way to trace this. So I suggest doing it in C. Uh, just cut your losses there. You can clean it up after you make the transition. Kate, do you have a question? No, I was just going to make a snarky <laughs> remark. Uh, one of the most popular talks we've got um, in our YouTube channel is the one uh, from Marzi on macrobatics. Oh yeah. So if, if you're getting confused around the macro stuff, uh, check that talk out. Yeah, and actually, Yong Kong Sen, who is also part of the Zephyr community, uh, he's, he's doing some work for us now. He's getting very good with those macrobatics. Uh, I'm learning a few things from him. So um, yeah, another new thing with Zephyr, the old Zetest API is gone. You know, long live the new king. Uh, the new Zetest API is almost identical to Gtest, so it's a pleasure to work with. Uh, it's basically like a one-to-one -one thing. So uh, there's nothing, you're not going to lose anything by switching. You're probably going to gain a little bit of peace of mind. So I would suggest doing that as soon as possible. Uh, amazing improvements in SMP. Amazing improvements in RISC-V by this guy right here. I'm pointing at you, Nico. Um, uh, I did a lot of work in POSIX, a little bit of stuff in networking, C, C++. I'm still you know, getting stuff done. Uh, of course, like we've had amazing improvements in logging. So. Uh, uh, thanks for uh, to Christoph because I know that he put in a lot of time on that stuff. Um, and then, of course, uh, just to set this date in your memory, LCS three <laughs> uh, will be twenty twenty four, uh, July twenty six, tentatively. And this has been pushed back a couple times, so we have to, we should apologize. But we really want to make sure that we get all the features lined up. We want to make sure that we don't do the, the you know the risk five thing again, where we didn't get it in for LTS. We don't want to do that again. Uh, we don't want to do, you know, the thing that happened with TFM, um, where the embed TLS version didn't line up. That was difficult. So now we're going to synchronize on all those LTS releases to provide the best thing uh, for Zephyr LTS 3. And, and there's a lot of pressure from the safety side to get that all re up ready for so that we can use it for safety. Exactly. And there's a lot of pressure from customers and mm -hmm. members of Zephyr's community, too, uh, especially for the safety stuff. So. Questions, feedback, uh, I don't even know if we have any time left. We're probably over by now. Uh, but yeah, I just want to say thanks. And the last thing I'm going to say, um, this is my fifth year of doing Linux plumbers. I'm going to take a break. So Stefan is going to take over his lead. We've discussed this. It's not a surprise for him. <laughs> not. Um, it's the first time I heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I emailed you. Like, so you were paying attention. Very good. It was like, it was made, might, might have been like 15 minutes ago, but you know. He knows about it already. I'm just kidding. Um, no. But thanks a lot. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, by this time next year when we do plumbers again, actually, I probably will still have a little bit of LTS role uh, because there's a six-month overlap. But uh, I'm basically going to wherever I can find a pineapple. So. <laughs>